So we can start to see why social media feels like a game and why it can start to feel like a drug and indeed why people can become addicted to it. Do you ever feel like social media is some kind of game that's reaching into your brain and messing with its reward centers, maybe pushing your dopamine releasing buttons? Well, if so, you'd be pretty right about that. So in addition to activating brain regions involved in our sense of self and those involved in social cognition, social media has been found to very strongly engage the brain's reward regions. These are uh, it's a system that's involved in everything from motivation to pleasure and, um, of course, subjective reward. And throughout, I'll be relying on a book chapter from a scholarly book uh, which was published in 2020 called Communication, Science, and Biology. And the name of the chapter is Social Media and Neuroscience Research. It's by the authors Darmeshi and Selen Ozdem Mertens. And that article will be referenced below in the description of this video. By the way, if you're new here, uh, I'm Andrew and this is Sense of Mind. This channel is all about helping you to upgrade your brain so you can improve your life. Specifically, I wanna give you the facts about how your brain and your mind work so that you can make scientifically informed decisions about the most consequential issues of your life and of our time. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe to this channel, give this video a like, and comment any thoughts you have. I'm really glad you're here, so let's get into this. In the last couple of videos, I've been talking about social media and the brain and loneliness. In the first video in this series, I talked about the psychology of loneliness and social media use, and how using social media can make you more or less lonely depending on how you use it. Uh, in the next video, the previous one from this one, I talked about how uh, loneliness is instantiated in the human brain, the neuroscience of loneliness, in other words. And in this video, I'm going to tie those two together and talk about the neuroscience of social media. Um, it's just good to keep in mind, however, that this research is really only about six, seven years old, but I've tried to focus on um, findings that seem to have support from more than one study so that these can be more robust general findings that will hopefully hold up in the future. So as I alluded to earlier in the video, these findings, uh, these studies tend to implicate uh, regions of the brain's reward system. So some prominent players in this area, some prominent brain regions that show up again and again in the neuroscience of social media are the nucleus accumbens and the ventral striatum. And I've talked before about the ventral striatum, but the nucleus accumbens and the ventral striatum are both part of the brain's dopaminergic reward system, meaning that they often use dopamine as a neurotransmitter and they're involved in um, motivation and sort of seeking and liking behavior uh, rather than pleasure itself. Okay, so one way that the reward system shows up in this research is, for example, a 2013 study showed that people whose nucleus accumbens uh, showed greater activation in response to a positive social reward. So in this case, being judged favorably um, after a tense job interview or being judged favorably by a panel of experts on whatever it is. Um, it, those positive social rewards. If someone's nucleus accumbens showed a large um, activity in response to those rewards, that predicted that that person used Facebook more often. So in other words, people who use Facebook more frequently show greater activity in the nucleus accumbens in response to social reward. So a 2014 study also showed that the activity of the ventral striatum was positively correlated with the user's degree of Facebook addiction. So um, you know, how addicted to social media they were. And that makes a lot of sense because the ventral striatum is involved in reward and of course involved in substance use disorder, in drug addiction. Related to this, a 2016 study showed that um, people's uh, 
at least for, for younger participants, for adolescents, that their ventral striatum activated more um, when their own Instagram photos got a lot of likes compared to when they got fewer likes. Um, so just another way of seeing that this ventral striatum is involved in um, the rewards we get from social media, the social rewards that come from social media use. And um, that makes a lot of sense because it's involved in reward and of course in addiction. And so we can start to see why social media feels like a game and why it can start to feel like a drug and indeed why people can become addicted to it. Okay, so another set of findings is that we like what other people like. So to be more specific, um, if you are looking at a post on social media and it's got a lot of likes as opposed to a small number of likes, you are more likely to actually like it regardless of what the content is. I mean, of course, you know, if, if you're not at all interested in something and it has thousands of likes, um, it doesn't mean that you're just gonna like it because a lot of other people like it, but just that you're more likely to the more likes that it has. And this also translates to um, Kickstarter projects. So the number of people supporting a Kickstarter projects um, helps determine how many more people will fund it. Okay, so for example, in one study, um, researchers basically got teenagers to read the descriptions of game apps from the App Store and decide how likely they would be to recommend them to someone. Then the researchers um, presented what they called an average or an aggregate score of um, what, what they said was other raters' um, recommendation, like how likely they were to recommend it. But these were just random. Um, it didn't actually have anything to do with the, uh, what the other participants said or their recommendations for that game. Then they asked them, would you like to change your, your opinion? Do you wanna change your recommendation based on what other people said on this, just this number? They were able to correlate um, kind of across the board on average, um, the activity of a specific brain region called the temporal parietal junction, which I've talked about before as being involved in mentalizing, um, which is basically like reading other people's minds based on their behaviors. And what they found was that the degree of temporal parietal junction activity um, predicted the amount by which participants would change their rating after hearing um, what the uh, aggregate rating was of that game. So that makes a lot of sense here. Um, that temporal parietal junction is involved in mentalizing, involved in you know, mind reading, so if we're changing our opinion based on the opinions of others, it makes sense that we're doing it because we're thinking about what they're thinking and maybe why they rated it that way. An even more direct way of getting at that same sort of principle that we like what other people like was a study that looked at people um, deciding on Instagram photos, whether they like them or whether they were just going to pass them by. And they found that participants uh, were more likely to like photos that already had a lot of likes on them and that the ventral striatum was activated when their own photos got a lot of likes. All right, so the final general set of findings that I'm going to talk about are that many of these studies have revealed that neuroimaging data, even when collected from you know, a relatively few number of participants, so on the order of like, uh, 30 to 100 participants, um, that some of these studies can actually predict market level or um, population level behavior. So let me explain what I mean a little bit. One study looked at real life news articles from the New York Times, and the researchers had data on how often and um, how much those articles had been shared in real life. So on social media and all the platforms, they then um, didn't tell participants that, but they asked them to look at the headlines of these articles while laying in a brain scanner and then decide on how likely they would be to share them. So the amazing thing was that in the brain's reward center, 
the amount of activity in the reward system was a better predictor of the rate at which a given article was shared compared to even how likely these participants said they would be to share that article and um, based on any characteristics of the article itself. Similarly, another study found that the degree to which the nucleus accumbens was activated in response to reading descriptions of Kickstarter and Kiva projects, these are actually two different studies, one looking at Kickstarter, one looking at Kiva, but both found that the degree of nucleus accumbens activity actually predicted uh, the real life um, rate of funding of those particular projects. So it's pretty amazing um, that the, the brain's response across participants can predict these real world market level population level behaviors. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you enjoyed it at all, please give it a like and comment any thoughts you have. I'm interested to hear what kind of effect you feel that social media has on your brain. Um, so let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to follow Sense of Mind on Instagram and Facebook, and please sign up for the newsletter. You can find that link in the description and on our channel's homepage. Be sure to click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you're notified and you never miss new videos from Sense of Mind. Uh, thanks again. This channel is brought to you by the Diamond Mind Foundation. This video was written and produced by me, Andrew Cooper Sansone. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.